Welcome to the Global Mirror, and we are continuing our focus in the run-up to America's much-awaited presidential election. Now, the right to abortion, it's a simple question which has a very clear answer, but an answer that varies vastly based on where you are on which side of the spectrum you are. Should a woman have the right over her body and the choice over whether she wants to abort or not? That's a very basic question, but as we've discussed, Nowhere is this more controversial, nowhere is this more heat, more hotly debated than the United States, where especially there has been a dramatic escalation in recent years, especially following the U.S. Supreme Court's decision in 2022 to overturn the Roe versus Wade judgment. Now, this landmark ruling has unleashed a wave of state-level legislations. Remember, in the United States, there are individual states which uh, the state-level laws, not a uniform law that extends across the country like we have in India. These are legislations that have come up in various states that either restrict or safeguard the right or access to abortion based on whether these states are Republican-leading or Democratic-leading. What this has resulted in is a fragmented landscape of reproductive rights across the nation. Now, in this charged atmosphere, former First Lady Melania Trump, the wife of the U.S. Republican candidate, has made headlines with a very bold declaration in her memoir, which is to be published just a month before the upcoming elections. In her memoir, Melania articulates a very strong stance, as you can see some of the excerpts we have put on our screens, a very strong stance in favor of women's autonomy regarding their reproductive choices, advocating for the right to decide whether to have children based on personal convictions, free from any sort of governmental intervention or societal pressure. Now, while her memoir does not solely focus on the topic of abortion, her remarks have ignited controversy, particularly as they intersect with her better half's views in, when it comes to reproductive rights. Critics are quick to point out that Melania's privileged upbringing and status may render her perspective less relative to the mil millions of women directly affected by restrictive abortion laws. Her decision to include a complete endorsement of abortion rights is particularly striking, as, of course, we have pointed out. She is the wife of the man you see on your screens, Donald Trump, Republican candidate, who has consistently championed an anti-abortion platform. So the question that arises, what are the dynamics within the party, within the Trump household, in fact, and what impact will differing views have on a highly contentious issue? Moreover, the backdrop of her remarks are critical, and they extend even beyond just the election verdict. Under Donald Trump's administration, there has been a significant rollback of women's reproductive rights, heightening tensions around the issue. Notably, data show that around 90% of abortions in the United States occur before 13 weeks of gestation, with less than 1% happening at or after 21 weeks. This underlines the urgency of abortion rights debate, emphasizing that it should not be brought down to just an election issue. Melania's memoir not only adds fuel to the ongoing discourse, but also exemplifies a very complex answer to a very basic question. Who has control over your body if you're a woman? Should society, should the government have control? Should it be your right to decide whether a life within you is allowed to live on or not? That is the big question. We'll try to get an answer at this point, joined by my panel of guests, Vibhuti Jha, former Republican candidate for the New York Assembly, Raymond Vickery, senior associate from the Cent uh, senior associate at the Center of Strategic International Studies and former assistant secretary of Commerce as well. I really did not want this to be a discussion between a panel of men, which is why I'm very grateful that Ava Singh, senior lawyer and activist, also decided to join us on the panel. Ava Singh, I'll start with you first, ma'am. For a lot of viewers in India, this might be an issue which seems to be quite complex and honestly an issue without for much at all about nothing at this point. Can you draw a contrast as to, compared to Indian laws, why is this such a contentious and fragmented issue in the United States? Because in most of the countries, it's a very straightforward issue. And dare I say it with a very straightforward answer. You know, I'm very proud to be born in India because I would say that we are far more, far more progressive than the West, particularly United States, where 13 states have prohibited abortion and have made it an offense. Whereas in India, a woman can abort her pregnancy up to 24 months now. And the Supreme Court has been very liberal. And in fact, it has hmm. made uh, right to abortion a part of Article 21, where it says that Article 21 
gives the woman in India the right of a reproductive choices, whether she wants to go ahead with the baby or not. And in certain hmm. cases, a medical board is set up. But nonetheless, this is a country where a woman can go for abortion as for her choice. But whereas in US, which even now we have such a massive brain drain, people running to the US for jobs, they are debating after Roe and Wade was uh, overturned and where they prohibited abortion. And okay. recently, two women lost their lives because they could not abort their pregnancy. So I think it is very relevant with the presidential election round the corner and presidential candidate Kamala Harris saying that no, right to abortion is a fundamental right for the women of the US. It becomes very important, very interesting, because after all, when we talk of equal protection of laws and equality before law, so India, when Article 14 gives you equality before okay. law, then why should women in the U.S. also not get equal protection of laws as far as reproductive autonomy is concerned? Well, one reason why it's a lot more complicated, our thing is, as we have mentioned here in the United States, the states, individual states have the right to draft their own laws, which means that you can be in one state where you have the right to have access to abortion and then you move a few miles away to the West and suddenly you're in a different state where that may be seen as a criminal, this thing. However, thanks, I was thinking for setting up the debate. Let me go across to my panelists who are joining me from the United States. Uh, Raymond Vickery, what do you make of this rather surprising turn of events? Because Melania Trump, arguably just a month before election in the United States, has taken quite a strong stand and an openly, openly strong stand in favor of the right to abortion. Well, thanks very much for having me. You're absolutely right that this is uh, a very crucial election issue. All the polls are showing that uh, Donald Trump uh, has a great deficit when it comes to we women, as much as 38 to 40 percent. Uh, he is desperate now to try to find a way in which to counteract the image which he carefully built for himself with the Christian right uh, to get elected in, in 2016, and that is that he would uh, overturn Roe versus Wade, and he is now trying to find a way forward. Uh, I don't believe uh, that this could have come out, and now uh, Melania Trump uh, has doubled down by uh, posting on social media an affirmation of what is in it. I don't think this would have happened uh, without uh, Donald Trump's um, uh, consent, really. I think that this is uh, part of the attempt to try to soften uh, the image somehow. I don't think it's going to work because uh, Donald Trump has been all over the place on this. In 1999, he was for the right uh, of True. abortion, and of course, uh, since he started running for president completely uh, changed his position, and now he's caught uh, in this contradiction. That, that, that is a very, very interesting stance, Raymond. And let me put that across with Vibhuti Jha as well. Vibhuti, comment on this. Has this not further exacerbated a rather confused stance by the former president? Donald Trump has been taking credit for Roe versus Wade being overturned since 2022. But since then, he has been vacillating on what exactly will be his next move. Sometimes he supported a legislation which effectively has been defeated by his own running mate in the States. And now a theory coming in or at least a suggestion coming in from Raymond that this is perhaps as part of a strategy to covertly show to people that he perhaps is amenable to a softer stance and which is why Melania is essentially a trump for a new change in his, uh, in his tactics, a new change in his strategy. Well, uh, thank you very much for having me. I, I have, I have, you know, I do not subscribe to the issue of abortion the way it is played upon as a political element. But look at it from the woman's point of view, which is what Melania is talking about. She going soft on this issue or taking an opposite stand to Trump's on this issue, nothing shocking about it, because husband and wife don't have to agree on everything. Brothers and sisters differ on issues. So there's nothing wrong about she taking a stand of that kind. Now, whether it is motivated as a political play driven by Trump, I do not know that. I, I wouldn't know this at this point in time. But here is the issue. It is indeed a woman's right. Woman's body is her own choice, what she does with her body. There is no dispute about that. The dispute is about a bigger issue, in my opinion, that, you know, we are living mm. in 21st century. 
every man and woman, every boy and girl has to be responsible and accountable for their action. We talk about responsibility and accountability. We forget this element in an interpersonal relationship between a man and a woman. It doesn't require a magic or a wisdom to know how pregnancy happens, wanted pregnancy or unwanted pregnancy. So when you indulge in a practice, in a, in a behavior, not practice, in a behavior in which you expose yourself to an un, unwanted pregnancy, then do you need to have a, have a responsibility for the consequences of your action? That's the important issue here. In 21st century, every boy and girl, every man and woman knows that sex is a basic need of an individual. You need to have, otherwise it leads to moral, ethical, mental stress and all kinds of stuff. So the point here is cases, cases of incest, rape, violence, if pregnancy happens on that account, definitely, who would want, I, if I, my daughter were alive today, and if she were a victim of a, a rape okay. or an incest, I would not want that DNA to be born again. She will have the choice to do what she wants to do with her body, absolutely. What is my concern here is that when you indulge in an unprotected sex, knowing full well that there can be an unwanted pregnancy, you, you, you must not destroy a life. A life, okay, on the 13th month or 20th month, I'm going to abort the child but because Mr. I Chow, just fancy that Mr. it's too Chow, difficult to I'm sorry to, to come in at this point. This, this is what is important Mr. Chow, there are so <laughs> many just ethical point. counters. Just, just, just okay, one please point. Go on. It is a unique yeah. country in America. You see the sights. It's a beautiful sight. When ducks and geese are crossing the street, you know, the traffic stops on both sides to let the life continue. Nobody runs over the ducks and geese because those, that life is useless. This is a country that loves life. I know of military people who have told me the greatest satisfaction that I have in this country is that if I'm able to reach my message to my army that I'm behind enemy lines, the country will do whatever it takes to rescue me. This is the story of the pilot who was shot behind enemy lines in the okay. movie, famous movie. Okay, That's okay, I'll come in here, here. Vibhuti, because Can I think life we're slightly debating from the issue. That's Again, I have, I have a choice right now. I have a choice right now to bring in Ava Singh to counter you on the moral aspects of it, but I'm going to keep it at this point in terms of a political one. You mentioned, of course, that the idea is to ensure that young couples, men and women, boys and girls are more responsible about the consequences of the actions here. By that logic, the Republican leading state should be more favor should be more in the favor of contraceptives and birth control as well. But that's also where we see your party and the states which take that, uh, which are run the red states taking a conservative stand as well. Data shows, there's a study with the Quinnipiac University which found that, finds that 55% of voters think that Vice President Kamala Harris is better equipped to tackle this issue compared to 38%. I'm not getting into the, again, the merits of whether the right to abortion is something that's justified or not. But the fact still remains, this is a very divisive issue. And the numbers indicate that Donald Trump's confusing stance over this has, some, has hurt his campaign. Is this a much needed damage attempt at damage control or is it perhaps the final straw that will sink that will sink the trump ship when it comes to taking a concerted clear stand on the right to abortion is it to me yes question, question that to question me? was to you with apologies for the long question but that was to you okay now that's that's perfectly understandable it is a very you know, difficult topic to deal with for the Republican Party. They ha it has been their, you know, better noi, if I may say so, the albatross. They have never been clear in defining the challenge. The issue is about exactly. protection of life. Yes, you are right. The Republican Party is on the back foot in this issue. And I totally, uh, you know, totally subscribe to your thought that it has to be handled well. The issue is also the, the politics of it comes in when it is made as an issue of the woman's right to her own body, it is, that is not an issue. It is woman's right, absolutely. I'm talking about another element okay. of that, is that there is a consequence to everything that we do. And to what extent can a woman protect herself from an Fair unwanted enough, but... pregnancy? It is, I, I repeat this matter. 
You cannot get up one fine morning in the 26th week and say, I want to abort. Yeah, extraordinary circumstances do require extraordinary measures. No doubt about that. Okay. But can that be made as if I, I, I've got up from the wrong side of the okay. bed and what I'm going to do, I'm going to abort the child. Is that the issue here? Is that the right we want? Is that the right we say okay, people point taken. can point ever taken. I'll, I just have two minutes on a very short chat, so I'll quickly go across to Raymond for the last word. Mr. Vickery, how much of it, I mean, we all know that at the end of the day, this election comes down to a battle of the swing states. And how much are you expecting this, act, this debate over the access, right to access abortion to be a key factor in the swing states, particularly as we have discussed, discussed Mr. Trump himself have presented a rather confused stance. And of course, let's not forget his rival is someone who's looking to make history as the first woman president, that to a woman of color. It's going to be very uh, crucial, even in states like uh, Ohio, uh, uh, Iowa, who have strong Christian right, anti-abortion. When it's been put to the ballot, it's been shown uh, that the people do not want the stance uh, that is being put forward by Donald Trump and the Republicans. And it's because democracy is much more than just election. It's about human freedom. And that feeds, of course, into what Vice President Harris has been saying all along, is that human rights, the right of a woman yeah. to be able to control her body, are absolutely fundamental. And I think it will be uh, very, very important. All right, if I can quickly go across to Ava Singh for one last word. Ava Singh, as you see a very contentious debate happening in the United States, do you see what message would you like to give uh, both our guests joining us from the United States in terms of larger impact? Because United, because America likes to be seen as the leader of the free world, but in this case, it seems that it is perhaps in need of some guidance. <laughs> I mean, a country which is so democratic, which believes in the rights of humans, is forgetting that women of this world also have their rights. When Mr. Jha says that no, a woman decides on 26 weeks that gets up and decides that she wants to go for aborting her baby, I want to tell him that no, it's not like that. Women also have brains, they think about it, but you have to think of the mental health whether she is in a position to bring that baby into the world and take care. What about pregnancies that okay. result from incest, from rape, all those things. And apart from that, there's something called mental health. So one has to take that into account. Reproductive autonomy, reproductive Absolutely. rights has to be of the mother and the mother alone. She should decide whether her body is ready, her mind is ready to have a child. Let us not politicize it. And the women of the country, I would say women of United States of America, know what is happening and I'm sure Kamala Harris for this stand is definitely going to get Indeed. a better voting percentage. Maybe and perhaps I hope it's uh, yes Ava Singh thank you so much for joining us with the views perhaps I mean I hope it comes down to as simple as the election word it in November being a sort of referendum on this very contentious issue that has plagued America and torn it apart but thank you so much Ava Singh thank you so much thank Raymond you. Vickery and thank you so much Vibhuti Jha always a pleasure to have you on Mirana at this point for joining me in this very short but illuminating debate